quick revision video on enthalpy changes from equations. So as you know, there are lots of different ways you can calculate an enthalpy change. So those include from calorimetry data, so using Kugel's MC delta T, from bond enthalpies, so bonds broken minus bonds formed, Hess's law cycles, so you can draw combustion cycles or formation cycles, the Cheats formula, as I call it, so the sum of the enthalpies of combustion of reactants minus the sum of the enthalpies of combustion of the product, or for from formation values, it's the other way around, products minus reactants. But the way I'm going to show you in this video is another way where we can use chemical equations. So I'm going to use a couple of questions. Now obviously you could do this one a much easier way than I'm going to show you, but hopefully the method will come in handy if you're stuck with some information you don't really know how to um, proceed. So we're going to use this information here to calculate the value for the enthalpy change of formation of hexane. Now you can probably see that these are all combustion values, so you could use a combustion cycle or you could use the Cheats formula, but I'm going to do it this new way. So the way this works is you write a chemical equation for the reaction that you need the enthalpy change for. So we've been asked to calculate a value for the enthalpy change of formation of hexane, so that's what it looks like. We don't know the enthalpy change, so we'll call that question mark. I'm now going to number the, in this case, three equations we've been given. And basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this equation using these equations here. So it's a bit like sort of simultaneous equations. So it looks like we need six carbons. Well, carbon features in equation number two, but there's only one mole in equation two. We need six, so we're going to need to multiply equation two by six. We need seven moles of hydrogen. Well, there it is in equation three. So we need to multiply equation 3 by 7. And then we need one mole of hexane. So there it is in equation 1, but it's on the wrong side of the arrow. We need it on the right. It needs to be a product, but on this one it's on the left. So what we do here is we subtract the equation, and that essentially flips it round. We don't need to multiply this one because we've got the correct number of moles that we want. So remember what we said, we need equation 2 times 6, we're going to add to that equation 3 times 7, but we're going to subtract from all of that equation 1. If you do that with all the species, you get all of that. That's the sum of those, um, of those equations multiplied out like that. So you might be thinking at this stage, this is horrendous, this method, but stay with it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cancel out like terms, so you can see Oxygen wise, we've got 6O2, so 12 O's essentially, and another 7 over 2. So we've got 19 over 2 O2s, so you can see they're going to cancel out. Carbon dioxide wise, we've got 6 on the left, 6 on the right, so they're going to cancel. And waters, 7 and 7, so they're going to cancel. So what we're left with is 6 carbon solids, 7 hydrogen gas, 1 mole of C6H14 liquid. So in other words, it's that. That's the equation we want. So if you can do that to the equations, you can do that to the enthalpy changes. So we're just going to put the values in for the three equations and out pops the answer, minus 197 kilojoules per mole. So here's another one. This is slightly trickier because of the way the information's been presented. Obviously, if you wanted to have a go at that, try and do it the equations way and see if you get the same answer as me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this table of information into a couple of equations. So we've got the enthalpy change of combustion of sulphur and the enthalpy change of combustion of hydrogen. So the equation to represent those look like them there. I'm now going to write the equation for the enthalpy change we need to make. So that's enthalpy change of formation of hydrogen sulphide, H2S. So that's going to be one mole of hydrogen gas plus one mole of sulphur solid. Reacting together give one mole of H2S gas. Number the equations one through to three. And I'm now going to look at how do I make this equation here from these. So one mole of hydrogen is in equation three. It's in the correct amount, so we're not multiplying this one out. It's on the correct side of the equation, so that's great. One mole of sulfur, so same again. Hydrogen sulfide 
is it's on the wrong side of this equation and it's in the wrong amount. We've got two moles in this equation, we only need one. So we're going to need to half this value. So there's the solution and let's look at what the equation is going to look like overall. It's going to end up looking like all of that. Now if you use this method in the exam, you don't need to do this line here, it's pretty horrible. You've just got to trust that, you know, that is going to create the equation that you are here after. But I'll just show you that it does. So looking at the oxygens first, half an oxygen plus an oxygen is three over two oxygens, so they cancel. SO2, SO2, they cancel. H2O, H2O they cancel. So we're left with H2 plus S gives H2S. So if we can do that with the equations, obviously we do that with the enthalpy change values, and there's your answer. So next time you're doing some enthalpy change calculations, if you can't see an obvious way to do it, in other words, you know, those methods that we were talking about before on the first slide, then you can probably do it using this method here. Like I said, this is the way I was taught to do in the 80s, and every single question we had to answer was using this method.